Well, I'd like to welcome you this morning to this homegoing celebration for Miss Dale. I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer this morning, so let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm so grateful and thankful that you're a God of love, you're a God of mercy, you're a God of grace. And Lord, you tell us in your word that you're the God of all comfort. And I pray today, Lord, as we enter into this service to celebrate Miss Dale's life, I pray, Lord, that you would be a comfort to the family and friends that are gathered here today to celebrate her life and a job well done. I thank you, Lord, for the hope that we have through the Lord Jesus Christ and the hope we have through the gospel. And I pray today, Lord, that you would speak to us, to everyone here today, Lord, that you would speak through your word into our lives. God, that we would examine our own hearts and lives today and that we might live our lives in light of eternity. Lord, we love you. We're thankful that we can be here today. And Lord, you blessed us with a beautiful, beautiful day. The sun's shining and the sky's blue, and we thank you for that. So, Lord, lead us and guide us and direct us and help us today. We pray this in Jesus' sweet and wonderful name for his sake. Amen. Again, I'd like to just uh, welcome, welcome everyone here today to the celebration of Mima, as I've known her and was introduced to her some 11 years ago as Mima and Papa and family, and I've just been a blessed to be a part of this family and call them my own. And uh, Papa came to me the other night and asked me if I would say something, and of course, and Mima wanted me to say that, so I'm going to, I'm going to fulfill her wishes and say something. When y'all asked me to do that, Papa, I already knew what God wanted me to say. And, you know, we came in here a while ago that there was some music playing in the background, two songs, It Is Well With My Soul and Precious Memories. And as we looked and watched the screen, I saw a lot of memories that I know I had part of and some of them you had a part of. And, and uh, as, you know, I looked here in, in this casket here, I. I knew where she is at. And that was just a shell. I knew where she is at. She is in heaven. And there's a blessed reunion going on in heaven the other night with uh, Lisa and me, Mom. And I know that without a doubt. We sat on the porch and talked about their salvation and where they'd spend eternity at. And there's nothing you can cherish more than to know the peace of where someone's at. And we were sitting there on the back porch of uh, Papa's house the other night, Saturday night. And if you sat around a, a fire or the back porch around the Heron household, you never know what you're going to hear. <laughs> <laughs> and I always enjoy it. It's always a good time to hear the stories and everything. But Papa, you shared something the other night that I feel like we just need to share with everyone here today. Papa was talking about whenever they first met and how he... He'd do everything he could just to, uh, to go see her. He would, uh, I think he said he'd work 16-hour shifts, go all the way to work, and then drive all the way to her house just to spend a little bit of time with her <laughs> in Thomasville. And then go back home, go to bed, go back and do it all again the next day. What he was doing is he was trying to do everything he could to spend time with her. Whatever it took, and I got to thinking about that, you know, many of us in here today, you may know that you're saved, and you may know that you have a relationship with Jesus Christ. And Papa done everything he could to make sure he could spend time with her. And I remind her in scripture there, when, when David and Bathsheba lost their son, he, he said these words that, I can't bring him back, but I know I'll go to him again one day. And what I'd like to share with the family and friends here today is that Christ has led this perfect path for us to get to see Mima again and to see other loved ones again. Make peace in your heart and know that you're going to see her again. Because just like Papa did, he, he's going to do everything he could to see Mima one more time. You know, just every day. 
and 60, going on 66 years of marriage. And what a smart, strong uh, legacy, legacy that she's left behind for the family. 66 years. She's definitely a strong woman. <laughs> she, she's had to put up with a few things. <laughs> but, and we hear all these stories every time we go around there and sit and talk, and I, and I love to hear all the places y'all have been and everything that y'all shared, and I encourage the family and friends, keep doing that. Keep doing that. Well, our gathering here today is very clear. 
We're here to celebrate the wonderful life of a very special person, Miss Dale Aaron. And we're here to honor and to glorify our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know, this kind of gathering is never easy because it's a time of mixed emotions. There's never any pleasure in gathering together to bid goodbye to somebody who was very special to us uh, in this walk of life. And it really doesn't matter a person's age or their physical conditions. The bottom line is death is very hard. It's difficult. But I'm glad that the Lord gives us some wonderful things in death and in times of sorrow and great difficulty. Isn't it wonderful that God gives us family and friends to gather around us? I know this family's very close, and I know there's a lot of friends who have reached out and express their love and sympathies to this dear family. And, but I'm also glad in times like these we have the precious word of God that we can turn to because God will speak to us and share some things to us that can cheer our hearts and bring us comfort. And as I begin to pray and think about what I would share today, and I begin to think about Miss Dale and the things that her family has said and friends have said, and even people at our church have expressed over the past few days. There's a thought that came to mind about Miss Dale, and the word that I, I thought about was the word precious. You know, Webster defines the word precious as something of high cost or worth, valuable, highly esteemed, cherished, precious. And I want to think about two things this morning. One, I want to think about Miss Dale's life and how it was precious. You know, life is precious. The Bible said in Proverbs 31, verse 10, and then in verse 30, these words, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. And then verse 30 says, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. And I think that description fits Miss Dale. The Bible says that her price is far above rubies. That means that she was precious, valuable, something of value. And I think about the times I've interacted with Miss Dale. She was always such a pleasant person to be around. She was always so kind. She was a person who had kind of a quiet and meek spirit about her. She wasn't, you know, real boisterous, just kind of quiet and meek and even keeled. And I believe anyone who knew her and everyone that's expressed to me would, would agree with me that she was a precious person. And I believe that preciousness expressed itself in several areas of her life. She loved her family. She loved her children, her grandchildren. She loved her husband. I've had several people talk about what a wonderful wife she was and how she took care of Jack in such a wonderful way. And I thought about Jack, you married way above your pay grade, my friend as most of us do, and I always thought that she was a very attractive and beautiful woman physically. You done well, my friend. You did well. <laughs> and she loved others. She not only loved her family, her children, her grandchildren, her husband, but she was a person of mercy. She was a tender person. She looked on others with compassion. She was caring. The Bible said, who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies? Miss Dale lived a life of preciousness, and you can't place a price tag on that. That is priceless. And to this family and the friends that are gathered here, I want you to consider what's been left for you. Miss Dale left you a good name. That can't be said of everybody at their death. But there's no shame here. You look at her life, and you should be filled with a sense of pride. Look at the life she touched. Look at the friendship she brought and how she left her mark on each one of your lives, each one of her children, her husband, all of the grandchildren. She's left her mark. Her life was precious. She left behind a good example. 
I think we would all do well to follow in her footsteps. And she left you an example on how to love and how to care and how to love other people. And then she left you the assurance of being loved. What a great blessing that is, that to know that she loved you and you knew that. And so really her death becomes a way for you to claim these gifts that she's left behind and follow after her example. And just as Dee said, remember, right? God gives us memory and think about the good times you've shared and the precious memories that you have and the funny things that happened and laugh and let that brighten the days ahead. But not only was her life precious, but I want us to think about this. Uh, Miss Dale's death was precious. Her death was precious. Psalm 116, verse 15. Listen to this verse. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I'm going to read that again. I want you to think about this now. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. You know, there's some statements in Scripture that are very contrary to human thinking. Natural human thinking. The idea of someone's life being precious, we can, we can grasp that. We can understand that. Why? Because we knew them and we interacted with them and we could see them and touch them. But the concept of death in Scripture is one that many people have a difficulty understanding. I mean, humanity's view of death and our minds and thoughts are very limited. Most people avoid the discussion of death. They don't want to think about death or be around death. They view it as defeat. And we equate death with sorrow and tears and great anxiety. And then many people fear death and they're uncomfortable about the thought of death. But God's estimation of death is quite different than what we might think. The Word of God states that death can be precious. And in an hour such as this, we ask, well, how can this be precious? Gathered here and in a funeral service, well, remember, precious is something of great value, something held close to a person's heart. And we ask the question, can death be precious? It's not precious to the doctors because death indicates defeat because medical science could not change the inevitable. Death is not precious to the family and friends that are gathered here because the loss is, and the separation is real. But to God, you know what God says? Precious in my sight are the death of my saints. You see, death is precious for certain people. He is saints. God says to us here today that Miss Dale's death is precious, valuable, close to his heart. And you know why? Because God completed something that he began long ago. It's more than a relief of pain and suffering and more than a ceasing of her earthly life. And on Sunday nights at our church at Pleasant Valley, I'm preaching through the book of Philippians, and I expounded and preached on this verse Sunday night. It's Philippians 1.6. Listen to what this verse says. Being confident of this very thing, that he which has begun a good work in you will perform it unto the day of Jesus Christ. That is what took place in Miss Dale's existence. You say, how can her death be precious? That cuts against human thought. Well, a work that God began in her heart many years ago because she came to a place in her life where she realized that she was a sinner and she needed a Savior and she repented of her sins and by faith trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as her personal Lord and Savior. And because she trusted Jesus Christ as her personal Savior, I'm telling you today, that brightens this hour with hope and joy and peace and comfort. We are not gathered today in the midst of hopelessness. No, but in a spirit of victory and celebration. Because when she died and left this walk of life, 
the Bible tells us that she was ushered into the very presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 5, 1, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. And then verse 8 says, We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. When Miss Dale went through the valley of the shadow of death, there was nothing for her to fear because Christ was right there with her. That event was precious to the Lord. You know, sometimes we use the vernacular and we say that we lost somebody. We might say, well, we lost Miss Dale. Can I tell you today, she's not lost. She's not lost. You see, she is kept by the power of God. God doesn't lose things that are precious to him. She's truly at home. You see, death is not really a bad thing for a Christian. It's the ultimate victory. You see, she laid down this old earthly shell for something eternal. Because I'm telling you today, based on the authority of the word of God, heaven is a real place. It's not something made up. It's not a fairy tale. No, heaven is a real place. And it's prepared by the Lord Jesus for those who place their faith and trust in him as their savior. Heaven is filled with real people. And she was reunited with loved ones that has gone on to be with the Lord. And the Bible tells us in heaven there's going to be some things that are not there. There's no more sickness for her, no more suffering, no more death. She'll never attend another funeral the rest of her existence. No more death. No more sorrow. All those things are passed away. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Does that not provide a beautiful backdrop for our gathering today? Because really what we're here to do is celebrate a job well done. This is a cause for joy, a time of thanksgiving. Not for what's been taken, but what has been given. That doesn't mean we don't cry. It doesn't mean that we don't hurt. That's God's way. Grief is a natural way for us to release our emotions and to deal with the loss. But we are filled with hope today. And I think about this. Miss Dale lived a precious life, but her death was also precious. But I want to ask you a question as we close today, and I want you to listen to me carefully. When it comes to the hour in your life to die, will God say of you, this is a precious event? Will he say that of you? Because the Bible says it's appointed unto men once to die. We're all going to face death. Well, it can be a precious event, but it takes a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ left the glories of heaven and came to this earth, born of a virgin, sinless, holy, right, lived a holy life, did things that no man had ever done. He raised the dead, healed the sick, opened blinded eyes. He proved by what he did and by what he said that he was the Son of God. And then he went to a cross, and they nailed him there, and he gave his life as a ransom for sinners. And they placed him in a borrowed tomb, but three days later, hallelujah, he arose from the dead. You see, that is the gospel. And the Bible says that if we want to be saved, we have to understand the gospel, and we have to meet the conditions that Jesus sets for us to be saved. And you say, well, what are those conditions? You must repent of your sin, turn from your will and way, and turn to Christ, and by faith, trust him. You see, quit running your life your way. That's the problem. People want to be king. They want to run their life their way. But what you've got to do is you've got to surrender your life to another, the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 10, 13 says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do you know him today? You know the greatest thing in this life is knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you don't know him, you need to put your faith and trust in him, as Miss Dale did. I think about any time I do a funeral, I think about the brevity of life. Life is brief. 
Now, Miss Dale lived 82 plus years, but I mean, life is brief, and we need to contemplate eternity today. You know what? Her life was precious. Her death was precious. But I want to tell you today, Jesus Christ is precious. And you need to trust him because he can give you hope in this life and hope in the life to come. There's an old hymn we sing that I love. It's called, He is So Precious to Me. And I want to read it. It goes like this. So precious is Jesus, my Savior, my King. His praises all the day with rapture I sing. To him in my weakness for strength I can cling. For he is so precious to me. He stood at my heart's door amid sunshine and rain and patiently waited an entrance to gain. What a shame that so long he entreated in vain. For he is so precious to me. I stand on the mountain of blessing at last. So cloud in the heavens a shadow to cast. His smile is upon me. The valley is past. For he is so precious to me. And listen to this last verse. It says, I praise him because he appointed a place where someday through faith in his wonderful grace, I know I shall see him and look on his face. For he is so precious to me. For he is so precious to me, for he is so precious to me. Tis heaven below, my Redeemer to know, for he is so precious to me. Jesus is truly precious because he gave, he gave us all a precious person, Miss Dale Herring. And even her death was a precious thing in the sight of God. We need to think on these things and thank God for these things. And family, I love you. I appreciate the opportunity to minister to you today and to share today in this service. And today, if you don't know the Lord Jesus, trust him today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we come to you in Jesus' name, and we're so thankful, Lord, for this time together as we can remember Miss Dale and celebrate her life and hear from you, God, out of your word. And I pray, Father, that you would wrap your loving arms around this family. Give them strength and sustain them and help them, Lord. Father, we're reminded today of the brevity of life, that, Lord, even if we live to be very old, it's really short. But, Lord, eternity is forever. And I pray today, Lord, for anyone sitting in this service today that has not repented and has not believed you, Lord. I pray that they would think about the things that we've looked at today and that they would see that you are so precious, that you love them so much, that you provided a way for them to be made right with you. I'm glad, Lord, today that we have hope in this place. And, Lord, we have hope that if we know you, just as Dee shared, that we'll see Miss Dale again. We'll see her again. This is not goodbye. This is just good night, Lord, just for a little while. And then we'll be with you and all of our loved ones and friends who have put their faith and trust in you. I pray for Jack. I pray, Lord, you'd be with him in the days ahead and give him strength, Lord. I know he's going to miss Miss Dale much, and I pray, Lord, that you just your grace would be sufficient in his life. And I pray for these dear children, Lord. I pray, God, that you'd just undergird them and love them and wrap your arms around them, Lord. We love you, Lord. Thank you for the privilege of prayer. Thank you for this celebration today. We give you glory and honor. In Christ's name we pray. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen.